have you ever wondered how a young man, barely out of his teens, managed to conquer most of the known world in just a decade? This tale, filled with daring battles and audacious tactics, is no myth but a chapter of history that's left an indelible mark on civilizations to come. We're about to embark on a journey that spans from Greece to Egypt and to the far reaches of Persia. This is the story of a man known as Alexander the Great. Our story begins in 336 BC in Macedonia with a young king ready to make his mark on history. This young king was none other than Alexander III of Macedonia, known to us as Alexander the Great. Alexander ascended to the throne at the tender age of 20, following the assassination of his father, King Philip the Saint. With a burning ambition and a well-drilled army at his disposal, Alexander began his reign with a series of rapid conquests. First, he turned his attention to the Balkans. Here, he quelled rebellions and consolidated his rule, proving to the world that despite his youth, he was a force to be reckoned with. Next, he set his sights on Greece, employing a combination of military might and shrewd diplomacy. Alexander brought the fiercely independent city-states under his control, uniting them in a way that had never been achieved before. With Greece under his control, Alexander set his sights on a new target, the mighty Persian Empire. In 334 BC, Alexander and his army crossed into Asia, beginning a war that would change the world forever. The Persian campaign was an audacious venture, a monumental testament to Alexander's ambition and military genius. The first significant confrontation was at the river Granicus. The Persians, under the command of local satraps, underestimated the Macedonian phalanx, believing their position on the high river bank unassailable. But Alexander's forces, led by his own fearless charge, turned the tide of the battle, securing a decisive victory. The Battle of Issus followed, marking a pivotal moment in the campaign. Darius III, the Persian king, had assembled a vast army, greatly outnumbering the Macedonians. Yet, on the narrow coastal plain at Issus, numbers mattered little. Alexander, spotting a gap in the Persian line, led a cavalry charge straight at Darius himself. The Persian king fled, leaving his army in disarray and the battlefield to the Macedonians. Then came the defining moment of the Persian campaign, the Battle of Gogamela. Darius had chosen the battleground carefully, a wide, open plain, perfect for his chariots and cavalry. But Alexander, ever the tactician, used a series of complex maneuvers to disrupt the Persian lines, creating gaps for his cavalry to exploit. In the thick of the battle, amidst dust and chaos, Alexander found Darius once again. The sight of the Macedonian king charging towards him was enough for Darius to abandon his army and the field. Each battle showcased Alexander's strategy, bravery, and leadership he led from the front. Always sharing in the danger, his strategies were innovative, daring, and often risky, but they worked. His leadership inspired his men fostering a sense of loyalty and camaraderie that held the army together through the toughest of times. By 331 BC, Alexander had toppled the Persian Empire and declared himself King of Asia. His conquest of Persia was a feat unparalleled in history, a testament to his military prowess and indomitable will. But the story of Alexander's conquest didn't stop there. His eyes were already set on lands beyond Persia, on empires yet unconquered. But Alexander was not satisfied with just Persia. His ambition drove him to the ends of the known world. Having secured the Persian Empire, 
Alexander turned his gaze westwards to the rich and storied lands of Egypt. There he was hailed not as a conqueror, but as a liberator. The Egyptians, having suffered under Persian rule, welcomed him with open arms. The oracle of Siwa even declared him to be the son of Ammon, a god in their pantheon, further solidifying his divine status in the eyes of his followers. In Egypt, Alexander founded the city of Alexandria, a beacon of culture and knowledge that would endure for centuries. He envisioned it as a hub where the East and West could meet, a testament to his dream of a united world under his rule. Yet Alexander's hunger for conquest was insatiable. He set his sights on the East to the mysterious lands of India. Unlike his previous campaigns, India proved to be a formidable challenge. The Indian kingdoms were well prepared and their warriors, unlike any he had faced before, Alexander's troops, weary from years of constant warfare, faced the Indian armies with a mixture of apprehension and awe. Despite the odds, Alexander's strategic brilliance shone through. He managed to secure several key victories, but at a heavy cost. His men were pushed to their limits, both physically and mentally. The hardships of the Indian campaign eventually took their toll, and the men, loyal as they were, pleaded with Alexander to turn back. Alexander, ever the dreamer, was disheartened, but he understood the plight of his men and decided to return to Babylon. His Indian campaign marked the end of his conquest, but by then he had already carved out one of the largest empires in history, stretching from Greece to Egypt and all the way to India. In just a decade, Alexander had carved out one of the largest empires in history. But what was the cost of such rapid conquest? And what was left when Alexander was gone? In the wake of Alexander's untimely demise, a power vacuum ensued, his vast empire stretching from the sunny shores of Greece to the snow-capped peaks of the Hindu Kush was split among his generals, known as the Deodoki. This fragmentation led to a series of wars, the wars of the Deodoki, painting the ancient world in strokes of blood and fire. Yet out of this chaos, new Hellenistic kingdoms were born. Their cultures imbued with the essence of both Greek and local traditions. Alexandria, the city named after Alexander, bloomed into a beacon of knowledge and culture, housing the legendary library of Alexandria. His empire, though divided, continued to thrive, its heartbeat pulsating with Greek philosophy, arts, and sciences. Alexander's military strategies, honed on the anvil of relentless warfare, have stood the test of time. His use of the phalanx, his swift cavalry charges, and his uncanny ability to exploit enemy weaknesses have been studied and emulated by military tacticians through the centuries. Alexander the Great, a man who conquered the world in a decade, left a legacy that has echoed through the ages. His conquests reshaped the ancient world and their impact can still be felt today. Even in death, Alexander continues to rule, not over lands, but over the annals of history, etched forever in the chronicles of human civilization.